and we can look what the simulations at what the spin structure looks like as it as it moves across the uh, as it moves across the sample. So we can sort of see, or at least we can calculate what we expect to see with computers. But how do we really see what's happening in nanomaterials, and in particular in nanomagnets? Well, we can look with optical microscopes. Um, that gets us down to a few hundred nanometers or a thousand nanometers in terms of the uh, diffraction limit of the microscope. And the limit of how small of a structure you can see with a microscope, like the one sitting over there, is based on the wavelength of the light that you use to look. So how can we see smaller? We can use something called near field optics. We can use smaller wavelengths, so we can move to using x-rays, which have a smaller wavelength, or electrons, which have a really, really small wavelength. And the other way to do it is using something called scanning probe microscopy. One of the most basic ways to image magnetic fields is something that you may have seen before. These are iron filings spread out on a piece of paper, and the iron filings will follow the direction of the magnetic field lines. So this has been used for, um, <laughs> for since the early 19th century as an imaging tool for magnetic fields at very large scales, so scales the size of a piece of paper. But you can actually use this to a degree to image the fields associated with much, much smaller materials. So you can look on thousands of nanometers. You just have to use really, really small iron filings, and you need a really good microscope. So that's one way that we can see magnetic, um, magnetic structure in things. One of the other ways we can do it is using magneto-optical methods. Um, you can actually get a magnetic signal off of something just using light. When you reflect light off the surface, you get a small change in the light's polarization, and that gives us magnetic contrast. So in this case, we have little tiny magnetic domains that look like a fingerprint, and this is in a, a, a material called yttrium iron garnet that's used for a lot of um, microwave and communications applications. And you get these really nice small domains, and we can see this with a special kind of microscope. Um, we can use electrons because those have a smaller wavelength. In this case, it's 0.0025 nanometers. So it's more than a thousand times smaller than the structures that we're trying to image. Of course, um, with electron microscopes, we have really bad lenses. So the, so the size limit is actually... Um, we can't go down quite as far as the, uh, as the wavelength, but it will allow us to see really small things. So these are actually magnetic nanoparticles at a size scale of 20 nanometers. And that's just looking at the structure. But we can also look at what happens to the magnetic moment, because electrons, when they travel through something, they're bent when they travel through something that has a magnetic field associated with it. And so we can uh, capture the amount that it's bent and use that to reconstruct the magnetic moment. So these are really nice pictures here that are actually, again, magnetic vortices. So the spins are swirling around in one direction here. And uh, they're, yeah, they're swirling around in each one of these little four nanometer magnetic nanoparticles. And uh, these were captured with the with a special kind of electron microscope. We can look with x-rays. Now, the electron microscope that you saw here, it fills a small room. It's about as high as the, well, not quite. It's about this high in terms of the column. So we're moving to smaller size scales, but we're using bigger instruments, much bigger than the, uh, than the little microscope that's sitting on the table over there. Well, you can also use x-rays, but to generate x-rays, usually you need a much larger source. So at the advanced photon source, we have a big ring like this that has a whole bunch of uh, beam lines that come off of it to generate x-rays. And you can walk around that ring in about 20 minutes. So it's a, a little more than a mile around in circumference. And at this facility, they have a special beam line called the nanoprobe beam line where they can focus the x-rays down to a spot size of about 30 nanometers. And they can look at uh, a whole bunch of different kinds of materials, but they can look at magnetic materials as well. And they need a special kind of lens called a Fresnel zone plate to uh, focus the, the, uh, the x-rays down to a small size. <laughs>
Otherwise, it's a bit similar to doing microscopy um, with some notable differences with optics. Um, we can use this to get magnetic images in different ways. One of the ways is called photo emission electron microscopy, and it gives you these really nice images of the spin structures of these small states. So you can see these ones here are pointing up, and this has a magnetic moment pointing down. This one is a vortex that spins in this direction. This is a vortex that spins in the opposite direction. And you can even put multiple vortices into the same structure. So you can image all of the different uh, magnetic states that you get that depend uh, quite strongly on the geometry and on the composition of the materials that you have there. We can also get very pretty pictures using scanning probe techniques. So this is moving to a whole different idea of how to develop an image. Instead of actually looking with uh, a microscope and that uh, using light reflected off your sample or electrons reflected off or traveling through, we actually take a little tiny tip like this that's very, very, very sharp and we scan that tip across the sample and look at the interactions of the tip with the sample as a function of position. And we can get different contrast modes. This is actually a ferroelectric, so it's looking at the electric fields in the sample, and it looks a lot like this, uh, this famous painting here. But we can use it to image magnetic materials by coating that tip with a magnetic uh, film. So we have a magnetic film that's interacting with the sample, and it maps out all the stray fields. So these are little vortices that are trapped inside of an elliptical structure here. And we get kind of a checkerboard pattern of stray fields. And that's associated with having the spin swirling in two different directions on either side of the sample. So this is a really nice way for looking at uh, the structure of magnetic materials. You can go even smaller with scanning probes by moving to something called scanning tunneling microscopy. Um, here again, we have a little tiny tip where, the, uh, where it's focused down to, in this case, it's atomically sharp. So we have one atom sitting on the end, and you scan that tip across the sample and construct an image that way. And this technique in particular actually won a Nobel Prize back in the 80s. And um, it was developed in part at IBM. So this is one of the very famous images that uh, that they used to demonstrate the technique, where they actually moved atoms around and wrote out IBM using single atoms, which is kind of neat. Well, for magnetic materials, you can put on, uh, you can choose a material that has uh, a magnetic moment associated with it. And then when you scan the tip around, through, around the sample, you can actually get magnetic contrast. So this is a little piece of iron. And you can see the scale bar here. So it's only about 200 nanometers across. And the topography just shows a nice flat iron structure. But when you look at the spin polarized image, you can see that the spins are actually curling around in a circle here in a vortex type configuration. And you can zoom in and you can look at, this is the in-plane component of the magnetization. So this is whether you have a moment that's pointing along the x direction or not. And this is the spins that are in the outer plane direction. So near the center of where those spins are curling, the spins actually start to be pulled out of the plane. So they point upwards in the structure. And the area where they point upwards is only 9 nanometers in diameter. So it's a very, very small area. And we call that the magnetic vortex core. And so this is a, one of the few techniques that can actually be used to measure the dimensions at those length scales very precisely. Um, spin polarized scanning tunneling microscopy can also be used to look at materials that are what we call antiferromagnets. So where the magnetic moments are ordered, but where they're not necessarily ordered in such a way that you get a net magnetic moment. So in this case, we have um, the magnetic moments that are, that are pointing up here, and then down here, and then up here, and down here. And this image is on with atomic resolution, so we can map out the magnetic moments of the individual magnets, which is something that you can't do very easily <laughs> in any other way. So one of the interesting things to look at with magnets are not only what kind of spin structures they have, but what happens on really, really fast time scales? How do they move around? And we can do this by actually taking snapshots.